just stay awake, stay awake, XCOM, XCOM. Hey, it's Sol, and I'm still here with more of the features that helped shape WoW into what it is today. Videos for Classic WoW and The Burning Crusade are in the playlist somewhere below. As a reminder, I've decided what best fit on this list. As nice as it was for Blizzard to include a barbershop, I don't think it made a huge splash on the overall experience, you feel me? Alright, let's roll. Sitting at the height of WoW subscription numbers, Wrath of the Lich King is WoW's second expansion and resolves one of the last major story conflicts present at the end of Warcraft 3, The Frozen Throne. Some features are refined, but other new tech is introduced including one that's considered one of the most controversial features in WoW's history. Phasing allowed Blizzard to create layers of storytelling by changing the environment around the player to suit the story being told. While its first implementations were a little buggy, the tech was used heavily in the Death Knight starting experience and allowed for some rich experiences like the Wrathgate and subsequent events, which I invite people to watch here if I can find a link. To lesser degrees, it's allowed the simple yet significant changing of environments, like the growth of the garrison. Phasing later helped pave the way for additional features like dynamic scenarios and cross-realm zones, which I'll go over in a future video. So by now, Blizzard noticed that, hey, they're gonna be working on World of Warcraft for a while, so the topic of getting players caught up to the current expansion probably came up, and it resulted with the creation of heirlooms. As a way to help players' alt characters progress to max level faster, this system was introduced and later expanded to fill multiple gear slots. In some ways, this has affected the low-level PvP or the Twink metagame. More noticeable, of course, was the leveling speed, but also the power difference against players without heirlooms. Matchmaking was already introduced for PvP Battlegrounds, and in Wrath, the feature was added to queue for a number of Battlegrounds all at the same time. And that's nice, but I'm more so talking about the PvE side of WoW. Anonymous matchmaking was introduced later in the expansion. This allowed players to quickly build groups and even instantly teleport to the dungeon queue. It wasn't without its criticisms and pain points, with players going AFK, and severe discrepancies in skill and power, or the general trolling of groups. Together, this helped promote a culture of toxicity that continues to be debated over to this day. It did, however, greatly raise the minimum participation rate of dungeons and would inspire Blizzard to use matchmaking in raids. And I kid you not, a lot of folks that didn't go to dungeons started going to dungeons. Some players are just, you know, more suited than others. We're revisiting raid size as a follow-up to the changes from the Burning Crusade. The feedback regarding raids was generally good, but there was a continued concern among players that raiding was only for large groups, and small groups were limited to Karazhan. To address the growing concern that raids should be made for both small and large groups, Blizzard took this by the horns and created 10 and 25 versions of their future raids. This prompted some interesting and maybe questionable player behavior, mostly due in part that the gear rewarded from each difficulty was not equal. Raiders belonging to 25-man groups found it advantageous to raid both 25 and 10-man raids for the additional gear. This gave them a huge competitive advantage when these large groups had a head start on achieving server first prestige in the 10-man space. This debate for equality would continue up until the end of WoW's fourth expansion, where a new one would begin. Another big addition to raid systems, hard mode started showing up during the release of the Old War raid instance, featuring special conditions to change the dynamic of an encounter. Following its success, in the Trial of the Crusader raid, a toggle was added for eligible raid leaders to access this harder difficulty. These heroic modes provided more difficult content with greater rewards, with the intention to stretch out the usability of a given instance. On top of that was the prestige of completing the game's most difficult content. The technical and social separation exists to this day, but it started here, with the birth of the Heroic Raider. Adapted from the success of Xbox Live, Wrath of the Lich King introduced the achievement system to identify the prestige of players. As awards for multiple raids and arena seasons and even older content started to wear away the once obvious allure of gear, clear identifiers like achievements took its place. On top of serving as a top score for completionists, the achievement system defines the player's history, highlights, and milestones. Earning all achievements is the closest thing to completing the game at the time. Blizzard basically created a global ID that allowed friends across servers to communicate with each other via chat and later go into instances together. Later, the system would evolve greatly to become the system that ties together the entire family of modern Blizzard games. Item level always existed, but was once a hidden number to identify the stat budget of an item, or gear, and determine its general level of power. The idea of green, blue, and purple text to identify the power of gear became confusing, and item levels simplified this. 
An after effect of this is that now a character's average item level is also revealed. Systems were created to help qualify players for PvE matchmaking and socially is an additional identifier to how good a player is. Kind of like an achievement. Yay, done! Woo! I just wanted to look away from the screen and, and look at you guys for, for just a quick second. Um, and I, and I wanted to thank you guys for supporting me so far. I got like, you know, some followers and some views and it's really cool. I'm really, I'm really liking this. I hope to keep making videos. Uh, even, even the folks that dislike the videos, uh, I guess I appreciate you guys too. Um, but more feedback would be, would be sweet. And I really want to hit a hundred. That'd be awesome. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all later. Stay breezy.